Hey guys, during this series of videos we're going to cover subtopic 4.3 on quantities in reactions. For the first video, this is going to be our learning objectives. We are going to learn how to calculate mass and molar concentrations uh, given their formulae. And we're going to also learn how we can convert between different mass and molar concentrations. This links directly to our science understanding here. So we're going to look at using some key formulae and as well as their rearrangements to look at how we can actually solve for concentration or anything related to it and also look at undertaking conversions between mass and molar concentrations. So firstly, concentration refers to the amount of solute which could be uh, as a mass or number of moles in a given volume of solution, normally given in mils or litres. Dilute solutions we can say have a relatively low solute concentration Concentrated solutions have a higher solute concentration. We can express concentration, as said before, either in mass or molar concentration units. We're going to start off by looking at mass concentration. And this could be written as a formula. So mass concentration is equal to the mass divided by the volume. We're firstly going to look at expressing mass in grams volume in litres, so our mass concentration will have the units of grams per litre. Now this symbol here is the Greek symbol rho, um, and it's usually used to refer to density, um, and this normally applies to pure substances, and density is essentially the mass of matter per unit volume. So we can see effectively how mass concentration is a measure of the same thing, which is why we use the symbol rho. To the top right, we've just used some uh, abbreviations to represent the formula as such. So this Greek symbol rho is equal to m over v, or the mass concentration is equal to mass divided by volume. Where might we see these units being used? Um, so in some cases, we might see them in domestic cleaning products. So this image here, we can see some white king, which is a, a bleach that we might use in the home. And I've just zoomed in here so we can actually see what the active ingredients are. We can see that this sodium hypochlorite is expressed in a concentration of 42 grams per litre, considering that the bottle itself measures the volume of the bleach in, in mils, so 750 mils. And we also have this ingredient sodium hydroxide. It's got a mass concentration of 9 grams per litre. Let's now have a look at an example of how we can use this formula. So our first example, a saline solution contains 0 0.90 grams of NaCl per 100.0 ml of solution. We need to calculate its mass concentration in grams per litre. So the first thing we're going to do is state the formula. So density or mass concentration is equal to mass over volume. We need to now substitute these values in, but it's important that each of those values is in the correct units. So we've got mass in grams, but we've got a volume in mils, so we're going to need to convert that into litres. That then becomes equal to 0 0.90 divided by 0 0.1000, that's how many litres are in 100 mils. And our answer gives us 9.0 grams per litre to two sig figs. Molar concentration is essentially the number of moles of a solute in a given volume of solvent. Note the, the units here, so number of moles, N is given in mole, uh, the volume again is given in litres, and our concentration we're going to use the symbol C for molar concentration, and that's given as moles per litre, which can be expressed in either of these ways. Another way of representing the units is using this capital M, uh, which we pronounce as molar, and this is also used as a, a measure for molar concentration. Over to the top right, we've got our formula here, so C is equal to N over V. We can rearrange that equation, or again, we can use this uh, triangle to solve for any of these three variables here, given information of the two. In our example for molar concentration, we have our saline solution again. Uh, again, it contains 0.90 grams of NaCl per 100.0 ml of solution. 
So instead of calculating mass concentration, we want to work out molar concentration. To do that, we're going to firstly need to calculate the number of moles. And in order to calculate the number of moles, we need to know the molar mass. So I've recorded it here, the molar mass of NaCl is 58.44 grams per mole. We're going to now substitute that into our formula for working out the number of moles. We know that's equal to mass over molar mass. We're going to have 0 0.90 divided by our molar mass of 58.44 and approximately we get 0.154 moles. We just want to keep that answer in our calculator and use that in the following calculation. So now we can use that and calculate the molar concentration. Concentration C is equal to N over V. So we're going to use our answer from previously and being roughly 0.154 our volume is going to be 0.1 litres and we should see that we get a concentration of 1.54 moles per litre. Another example, and perhaps in this case now we have to work out um, the mass of glucose that is needed to prepare 250.0 mils uh, of solution with a concentration of 5.50 molar or moles per litre. So in this case we're going to work backwards we're going to use um, a rearrangement of that formula for molar concentration. So in this case, the number of moles of glucose is going to be equal to C times V. We've got concentration here, we've got volume here, we just need to convert that into litres. So we've got 5.50 times 0 0.2500. Our answer is 1.375 moles. From here, we're going to need to work backwards and solve for mass using, firstly, the molar mass, um, which I've given here is 180.156. The formula we're going to use to calculate the mass of glucose is going to be equal to N times big M, or the number of moles times the molar mass. We've got our number of moles from previously, and as well as our molar mass. So we just need to multiply the two together and we work out that we would need a mass of 248 grams to prepare this solution of that particular concentration. I've introduced to you the two most common ways of representing concentrations, but it turns out that there are other ways we can represent mass concentrations. And this can be used depending on how concentrated or how dilute the solution is. These other representations are, firstly, as a percentage, and we're going to start off by talking about percent weight per volume and what that means. We also have other units, parts per million and parts per billion. Percent weight per volume is commonly used in pharmaceuticals and also household cleaning products. It's essentially the mass of a solute in grams in every 100 mils of solution. So you can think of its units as being grams per 100 mil. And we know anything out of 100 is effectively a percentage. On this slide, we've got an image of uh, a betadine sore throat gargle. What I've done is just zoomed in on this section here over to the right, and it shows you that it contains 7.5% weight per volume of povidone iodine. That percentage effectively means that it contains 7.5 grams of povidone iodine per 100 mils of solution. Concentrations can also be represented as a percent weight per weight, as shown here. Uh, we can often find these also in pharmaceuticals, uh, but also food nutrition labels. It's effectively the mass of a solute in grams in every 100 grams of a solution or a mixture. So the units can be expressed as grams per 100 grams. This picture of Voltar and Emugel um, which we often use to help uh, relieve for local pain and help reduce inflammation. We can see that it's got a concentration of 1% weight per weight. So that would mean it contains one gram of this active ingredient here for every 100 grams of the actual gel itself. This is also represented in these units here. So 10 milligrams per gram which is equivalent to a 1% weight per weight concentration. Another example uh, would be in toothpaste. And I've just shown you the uh, ingredients list here. And in particular, it shows you one of the key ingredients is the sodium fluoride, 
where it contains a concentration of 0.111% weight per weight of sodium fluoride. So again, for every 100 grams of our toothpaste, um, it will contain 0.111 grams of sodium fluoride, which doesn't seem like very much. I said that you can find these percent weight per weights on uh, food nutrition labels as well. So usually we find a column that's expressing per 100 grams. And what we can see is, for example, proteins. Um, there are 7.2 grams of protein per 100 grams of this particular food product. So this could be expressed as 7.2% weight per weight. Other mixtures, and in particular liquid mixtures, might be represented as a percent volume per volume. So an example would be in alcoholic beverages, and this would represent the amount of a solute in mils for every one mil, 100 mils of solution, or mils per 100 mils. So this can of cider here, we can see at the bottom it's got a concentration of 4.5%. That would mean it contains 4.5 mils of ethanol per 100 mils of the actual cider. We can get to even smaller concentrations. Um, so parts per million, we often use to measure very low concentrations. Examples of using parts per million would be, for example, uh, measuring carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. Uh, also looking at dissolved minerals or pollutants in large bodies of water. The units parts per million can be expressed as the mass of a solute in milligrams that is present in one kilogram of solution. The units can be expressed as milligrams per kilogram or milligrams times kilograms to the minus one. We know that one kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams and then 1,000 grams would be equivalent to 1 million milligrams. So you can see where these units come from. Uh, the amount of uh, solute in milligrams per kilogram of solution. When it comes to dilute aqueous solutions, we assume that the density of the solution is equal to the density of pure water. Uh, pure water has a density of one gram per mil, which means that one gram is equal to one mil, or one mil is equal to one gram. So if we have a look at these units for um, concentration, we can say that uh, milligrams per kilogram is then equivalent to milligrams per litre. So you might often see parts per million represented as milligrams per litre. Parts per billion, we're getting into even smaller concentration units. So looking at things like contaminants in soil or large bodies of water. Parts per billion represents the mass of a solute in micrograms that are present in one kilogram of solution. Again, we know in one kilogram there are one billion micrograms, so you can see where parts per billion comes from. We are looking at even smaller concentrations, so we can essentially equate one kilogram as being equal to one litre. So the units micrograms per kilogram are often expressed as micrograms per litre. Finally, this slide shows you a flowchart that you can use to convert from one set of concentration units to another. The way to use this is, so let's start off with moles per litre. If we want to convert to grams per litre, we follow this flowchart and we realise we just have to multiply by the molar mass to convert into grams per litre. Molar mass has the units of grams per mole, so if we multiply moles per litre by grams per mole, the moles will cancel out and that will leave us grams per litre. On the other hand, if I wanted to convert, say, between parts per billion to grams per litre, I'll follow this flow chart. I'll firstly need to divide by 10 to the power of 3, which is 1,000, to convert from parts per billion to parts per million. And then again, I'll need to divide by 10 to the power of 3 to convert it back to grams per litre. So in total, I would need to divide by 10 to the power of 6 to convert from parts per billion to grams per litre. We're going to work in class more uh, looking at how we can convert between these concentration units.